Hey everyone, Jason here, and today we're diving into five different ways you can use Tonex software that go way beyond just plugging in and playing. Whether you're a hobbyist, recording guitarist, or even mixing a full production, there's a Tonex workflow that will fit your setup and your CPU budget, so let's jump right in. So probably the most common way to use Tonax, and this is gonna be the number one way that we're gonna talk about today, is in standalone mode, uh, which is with your audio interface. So quick word about my setup. I'm using my UAD Apollo X4 interface plugged into the high impedance input. It's a very important point. Make sure you are actually plugged into a high impedance input and instrument input so that it's going to react with your guitar the proper way and give you the proper tone. In this setup here, it's very simple. We're going to come up here here. We're going to choose our audio interface, as you can see here, Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Uh, I'm set to the guitar in for the instrument input, Universal Audio Output Device. Now you're going to set it to wherever your monitors are plugged into. For this particular video, I have to be set to Virtual 5.6, which is kind of a loopback thing. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later, just so you can actually hear what I'm doing today. Once you're set up like that, you can choose your tone model and you can get playing. This is a tone model from one of my latest releases, the P75 Royale Ultimate, which is based off my incredible hand-wired Park Amplification P75 Classic. Beautiful amp and beautiful set of tones. I'll be using these today throughout the video to showcase the different ways we can use this, and the links are below if you're so inclined and want to grab a copy of it. This is the way so many folks are going to use Tonex. Just basically plug in for enjoyment through maybe an FRFR or maybe their studio speakers, and however, they're just sitting around having fun enjoying playing. The thing is, that's where a lot of people stop and it's not where you have to stop if you are a studio musician or if you're somebody who's interested in recording. So we're going to dive into some other ways that we can actually utilize Tonex within our DAW or our digital audio workstation. So now we're going to head over to Cubase. That's my DAW of choice for this particular situation. I'm going to be using Cubase 13 Pro. Now, what's going to happen if we want to record with Tonex? There's a whole bunch of options here. So I have a blank project here. And let's say I wanted to utilize some of these tones I was just playing. One way we can do it is to use Tonex as a plug-in on each track in your DAW. Now there's going to be positives and negatives to this. And I'll give you an example. Let's add a track here in Cubase. I'm going to come in. I'm going to make sure I select my hardware input to be my guitar input that I'm plugged into, like I mentioned before, my high impedance. I want the configuration to be stereo. We'll just call this guitar one for a really creative name. We can come onto this track and we can load up on the insert an instance of the Tonex plugin. And when I click that, you're gonna notice that Tonex plugin pops up. And I can go right back over and locate this same tone model I was just demonstrating a second ago. You can have that there. I can monitor and enable the track so we can hear what we're doing. <laughs> Now we're basically applying Tonex processing to this track. So if I enable this and record it onto here, I would have this little track here and what I'm going to do is just loop this. So I could play that back and take my input monitoring off. Now the thing about this is if I disable or bypass Tonex software, this is what's actually recorded. We might think that that tone is recorded, but what we actually did is just record the dry guitar. Now the benefit to this is I could enable Tonex and I could say, you know what, I used the wrong tone model. I actually wanted to use that one, or I wanted to use this one, or this one, or this one. Now the problem lies in, let's say that we wanted to use multiple tracks. And let's say I come in and I duplicate this track so we have another instance of it. Well, now the problem is we have two instances of Tonex running. So what's gonna happen is the hit on my CPU is gonna get larger and larger. So here's the downside. Let's say we had a track that has 
24 or 32 tracks of guitar. It does happen. And we had to have an instance of Tonex on each of them. It's very flexible. We can go in and alter the tones later and even change the tone models out or just use that track to simply reamp all together, but it could really tax our mixing session and maybe our CPU won't be able to handle that. So that is one way we work where we don't actually commit the tone to tape. We have the tone X on the insert of the track where we have just the DI of the track, the dry guitar track record that we could apply processing to. Now let's do this for a second here. Let's get rid of what we recorded. And we're going to come in here and we're gonna remove this instance of Tonex altogether. Now some DAWs, and your, your DAW may have this or it may not, but some DAWs have the ability to add effects or plugins to our input track. So here is the input track that I am recording onto. And as you can see right now, if I was just monitor enable this, You can hear a fairly low level of what we have, and that's going to basically record onto that track just as such if I chose to do so. Right, and I could go back and you know, have that recorded. What if I wanted though to come into my input track and put an instance of Tonex on that, and I'm gonna do that right here. So now we have Tonex there, and I'm gonna come in and find that same tone model slash preset that I was using. I really liked that tone, and here we have it. So now we have that tone. It's actually going to be printed to quote unquote tape. So if I come back here and record again, Now what you can see here is, even though I don't have any processing on this track, what's been recorded is the actual processed Tonex signal. Now, what's the positive to that? Well, the positive to that is I could have numerous tracks, run them through if I was certain about what processing or what tone model I wanted, and I could just print that to tape so that I'm not going to, in the end, have to have 20, 24, 30, or however many tracks we have, instances of Tonex, it's gonna tax my CPU. So if you're 100% sure that you've got the raw tone you want, and maybe you'll do a little processing to it later with compression, reverb, whatever else you wanna to add to it, we can utilize this and put Tonex right on our input track track, print that to tape. Going to be a very different way than the previous method we talked about where we capture our dry guitar signal and then add an instance of Tonex to that track where there we're going to end up with numerous instances of Tonex. Is there a right way? No, there isn't. It's really gonna depend on your preferred way of working. This video is just more about awareness and making you aware that these different ways of working are possible. So wouldn't it be nice if we had kind of a hybrid method where we could combine the best of both worlds? Well, we can do that and if your DAW allows it like Cubase does. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to actually add a second input. So we have mono in one here. I could call this mono in two. I could name these whatever I want. The name is unimportant. But I'm going to assign both of them to that high impedance instrument input. Okay, so we now have two inputs. You see down here we have both of these. And I could actually, for if you really wanted to get rid of any confusion, I could say that this is going to be processed while this is going to be dry. You can call this whatever you want, that's not important. But on the process track, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put an instance of Tonex. So what's going to happen, as we've already learned, is that, and again, we'll come back and find our nice little preset that we were enjoying so much here from my P75 Royal collection. I have that now so that my guitar, think this through, is going to come in on this track and be processed through Tonex and captured to a track when I add it. And I'm also gonna have a dry unprocessed signal. So now I can come and add two tracks here. I can have one that, if, if we go to the bus that I created, process, that's gonna be the process Tonex tone. And we can call that guitar underscore one. Let's put that there, we'll record and monitor enable that and we're going to add another track which we're going to call dry which is that dry bus we created and we're going to call this 
guitar di underscore one. And we're gonna record enable that. So now basically think about this. What we have is we have our process signal coming in, going through an instance of Tonex with the tone model that we chose. It's gonna be printed to this track. We have another instance of the exact same thing going in through that same guitar input going on this track and it's gonna be captured here. We can even just mute this track because we don't need to hear it, and, but I don't even have it monitor enabled, uh, but it just depends on how your settings are in your DAW. So now I could capture something like this. Now, if we go back and play that, and let me just loop that, I can listen back to this, and I've captured my wet process guitar, but here, I've also captured the exact same performance as a DI dry guitar. So I can have that in case I need to use it later, but if I'm happy with what I captured up here, then I'm good to go. I could always come into the dry process guitar later add an instance of Tonex to it and choose to process it with a different tone model. So that's another way that we can work. And the final way of working would be if you do have an audio interface that has some sort of a loopback feature on it. This is a feature I use a lot when making videos. You can work with just Tonex and send it out of the loop back out. So basically uh, the Apollo interfaces have these virtual inputs and outputs. So if I set the outputs to virtual three, four, and then go over to my DAW of choice, and go into where I just was there in the audio connections. I can come in and choose those same virtual tracks in here and assign those. And then basically what's going to happen when we play from Tonex, we'll capture those into our DAW. So there you go, five powerful ways to use Tonex software, whether you're keeping it simple or running a pro level hybrid workflow. If you learned something new or if you're going to try a different setup after watching this, drop a comment and let me know what you're using Tonex for in your setup. And of course, if you want tone models that will make you sound really great, you can check out my collections below below at the links in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoy the music on the way out. <laughs>